Well, as you we were saying, Osama bin Laden is gone, but al-Qaeda isn't. The group's number two, Egyptian-born Ayman al-Zawahiri, is now expected to take the helm. While bin Laden is seen as the inspiration behind al-Qaeda, many believe al-Zawahiri is the real brains behind the organization, steering its operations over the years. He has a $25 million bounty on his head. There's also Saif al-Adel. He's also al-Qaeda's top military commander and was reportedly arrested in Iran, though Iran has never actually confirmed this. Well, recent reports suggest Adel may now be in northern Pakistan. And Abu Yahya al-Libi has emerged as al-Qaeda's leading religious expert. He's also been the visible face of al-Qaeda, appearing in many videos in recent years. He's also a field commander in Afghanistan. Well, Anna Murison is a global jihad analyst and joins me live from our London studio. Um, Anna Murison, uh, a long list of possible contenders there for the leadership. Who do you think is likely to emerge uh, as a possible leader for the group uh, and why? Well, as you said, Ayman al-Zawahiri has effectively been the operational commander for al-Qaeda in recent years. He is most likely to take over the helm in the short term. Having said that, there are certainly lots of other players behind the scenes. Zawahiri himself is not particularly popular. He doesn't command the same affection as bin Laden was able to do. And I think he knows that he's going to have to enlist the help, especially of younger generation leaders, to help him. Uh, bin Laden's death has come at a particularly bad time for al-Qaeda and Zawahiri's own response to the Arab uh, Spring uprisings was very slow. He's since enlisted some younger people like Atiya Abdul Rahman al-Libi, uh, who's a contemporary of Abu Yahya al-Libi, who you mentioned, uh, to, to present a more conciliatory approach, really. So I think that we're going to see more of him. At the same time, Saif al-Adl, uh, one of the founder members of al-Qaeda, also an older Egyptian veteran of jihad, it has been pushing again for a more concili conciliatory approach whereby al-Qaeda reaches out to, to slightly less radical Islamists and I think very much they're going to try to capture the, the popular mood which has really turned against them very much at the moment. And, and, and that's an interesting point you make Anna. I mean what impact will his death now have on the militant ideology that al-Qaeda propagated? I mean the revolutions and uprisings in the Middle East as you say uh, were never part of the al-Qaeda narrative so how how's his death like the impact on that ideology? Well, they've, they've really done a bit of an about turn because, as you know, they've, they've long opposed groups like the Muslim Brotherhood who've stated their willingness to participate in parliamentary democracy, which Al-Qaeda sees as absolutely beyond the pale. Uh, what we've seen recently is that they've been suggesting, well, perhaps we ought to work with these groups a little more, perhaps we shouldn't see them as our enemies. Of course, people like the Muslim Brotherhood or Anahda in Tunisia are very unlikely to be interested at all in that kind of collaboration that's very far from being in their interests. But I think that's what we're seeing is really Al-Qaeda running scared. I think they see that the mood is, is really slipping past them. People are much more interested in reform, in participation in democracy, and I think Al-Qaeda will have to work more to, to make itself appear a little more appealing to a mainstream audience which has that experience now of participation in mass protests. Let me just get a quick final thought from you in terms of Al-Qaeda's terror campaign. Is bin Laden's death likely to rejuvenate the call for global jihad? I mean, are we likely to see the sorts of spectacular terror attacks like 9-11 again? I don't think so. Uh, we know that al-Qaeda leaders in Pakistan have been trying to conduct this type of spectacular attacks for the last few years in the West, and they haven't been able to do it. So I don't think that bin Laden's death means that they will suddenly rediscover this capacity to do so. I think it's very much waning. And um, perhaps we might see reprisals in an area like Yemen, where al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula is on the ascendancy. But certainly al-Qaeda in Pakistan, I think its power has dwindled very much. Okay. Anna Murison in London, thank you for talking to Al Jazeera.